Hello, Real Producers, your publisher, Kristen Brindley, and I'm here with the wonderful Dane. And um, Dane work is on our cover for Nova for October. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. And I love his story. And uh, thank you so much for being on our cover and being with us. Thank you, Dane. Thank you very much. Happy yeah. to be here. Hey, well, um, I mean, I, when I think of, of your story and everything that you have done, I'm super impressed with, you know, 60 houses, 60 million last year, um, over 300 million in your, your career. Um, and I mean, you touch all of it. Like you have, um, a high quality service that you really care, you care about your clients. And, um, this isn't like a huge team doing this. That was all you, um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know that I could do it again, but um, but certainly uh, no, no complaints. I made it through and uh, not sure that the circumstances will arrive that, uh, that I get to do it again. But uh, it was certainly um, uh, a challenge uh, for my professionalism and um, and it was a reward in the fact that all the years of effort culminated in that much need at that time. What it, what it meant. Yeah, that's a lot of, well, that's a lot of business. So, I mean, you've been in the business for 22 years. How did this start? Like you could do anything. You're a really smart guy. Why real estate? Like how'd this happen, Dave? Well, I just sort of had a passion uh, for real estate and before I practiced it. And I had a very, very good uh, real estate agent, a Remax agent who recruited me into the system, um, but always said I should be doing it for myself. And a longtime friend, and I'm very uh, uh, thankful that I was directed in, in this direction, uh, Ken Sylvester. He still practices today, but um, he, um, he encouraged me to do it. I decided to do it when I was transitioning from a small business owner to a new career. And uh, I had um, uh, been in the restaurant business for a long time. So um, I was buying and selling properties for myself. And, uh, and one day decided, you know, hey, maybe I should just do this for other people at his encouragement. So here I am and I started, I got licensed in 99, but didn't start practicing till 2000. And, um, and here I am. But um, through the relationships that I built through business and being in the community and um, uh, just being active, um, sports active, et cetera, I was able to build a lot of relationships. I didn't know what kind of potential I may have had. So I didn't really do any marketing. It was just sort of already there. I guess, you know, I was fortunate to have people trust me. And, um, and then it grew and grew and grew. So I'm very thankful for that. For you, what has been most challenging and maybe most rewarding, you know, in your career? Uh, the most challenging, I think, is uh, from any business cycle, any business that you go into was learning at basically, you know, 40 years old, um, learning the cycles of business that come with real estate. You know, it's tied to the economy and certain forces that you can't control. You can't work harder sometimes and produce more because the conditions aren't there. So... Um, so you do the best you can with what you got. That was a learning curve, you know. So when when it doesn't rain, you know, it dries up, right? And the tumbleweeds come, and and so you got to prepare for that. And more so than in an ongoing like retail business, which is oh, I was familiar with as an owner. You always have predictable cycles or seasons. Not so much with real estate. You can have a drought. You can have a two-year cycle. Maybe some of the forces that we're seeing now. Are examples. So the biggest challenge for me was getting used to um, really hunkering down, um, staying low to the ground when it came to running my business. And what I discovered was, and the challenges and the rewards, was I thought in the time with the emerging technology, things were speeding up so fast, the team concept grew because it was hard to keep up with everything. Yeah. And it was, everything was going so fast. I mean, literally almost couldn't keep up with it. So the team concept helped people spread and conquer. And I get it. It's a wonderful system, but it wasn't for me. I decided to stay as low to the ground as I could be. And I'll take what comes in. And when it becomes too much, maybe I can 
you know, enlist some part-time help on an hourly basis, but it allowed me to ebb and flow with all the possible economic forces and changes with zero impact to my business model. It was just me. I can work all day long or not. And um, so it just became a very sensible thing and it's allowed me to really float on the, on the top in, in any market you know, conditions. Well, what do you feel like um, sets you apart, makes you different um, than other realtors out there? What makes you different? My aftershave, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always uh, I always tell people that at open houses, I go, be careful, I'm wearing my special cologne that's going to make you buy this house. Um, the thing that sets me apart, I think, is that I, I don't take myself too, too seriously. You know, maybe sometimes I'm almost too um, off the cuff. And uh, because, you know, it's, we're in a serious business. It's legal, fiduciary responsibilities, and, um, and everything needs to be taken very seriously. And I can't almost do anything without a, a joke or a quip or something. And um, so, you know, getting to the point maybe that might set me up apart from the average person that might be newer and a little bit more structured and then afraid to test the gray area of, you know, of what's appropriate and what's not, you know, what the broker may think is appropriate or not. But it, when, when you have the right people, it's all in good taste. I think that, uh, that, that, you know, I, I think you can't do anything without a big sense of humor. So I hope that sets me apart. I, I believe it does. And, um, you know, we were talking earlier about it being emotional for a lot of people buying and selling houses. I think humor can dispel um, some of those things. What defines success for you? Like, um, if you were to define success for us, what, it, what does that mean? A repeat customer. I mean, there, you know, because I think, you know, you know, like the loyalty to your magazine and your events, a repeat customer speaks volumes. And they can recommendation, they can do all this online stuff. The most flattering, the most productive input that I can get from the marketplace, the most, um, uh, I guess, endearing thing that can happen to you is a repeat customer because that tells you everything about how you left off. And if you can do that, if you can do that and always strive to do that, and to answer your question is always do the right thing. Always do more than the right thing if you can. And when people realize that you're doing work for them and it's selfless, you don't care about the paycheck, you don't care about the money, you don't care about the, all you want them to do is be happy, that phone will ring again. What do you think is maybe the biggest um, failure you've had and what did, what did you learn from it? Like, What are the lessons you took? Well, you know, that, that could be a daily thing. It could be a weekly thing, a monthly thing. Um, I think in, in, in a humorous sense, it's when we say, you know, maybe a failure, there's always learning lessons. There's always a, a miss this or something. It's like, ah, oh, I could have done that. Nothing devastating. And, um, but if I had to say where the road splits sometimes when you look from a business perspective, um, I had a, a very local big um, restaurant operation because of my contacts and and, um, and I still immerse myself with some political stuff involved with, uh, with the restaurants when it comes to service and uh, ABC and things like that. And, uh, and so we all try to um, lend a hand. And we, we, we did some nice things with the, the General Assembly when it came to um, um, food delivery and processing and things like this. This is before COVID. In this uh, large restaurant company, um, said, hey, you know what, Dane, you were such a contributor to this, and thank you, and thanks for you know, supporting our causes. We'd like to put your logo, your real estate logo, on all of our to-go stuff. And I went, you know, that's sort of not me. I mean, this is, it's very significant, Kristen, and and I said, no, you know, it's very nice of you, but I did all this stuff because I want to help and I'm a contributor and I always will, but yeah, you know, thank you, no thank you. And they continued to become bigger and bigger and bigger. And if I had to say, if I had a failure, it was to miss that boat. I didn't get on that ship. 
And I probably would be a team of 20 people had I taken that opportunity. So if I had to look back about, you know, missed opportunity or maybe a failure, um, it was probably something along that line where there was a real marketing give me. It would be like somebody wanting to sign you up with um, um, Exxon or something, I don't know if they still exist, you know, Exxon Mobil, and say, you're going to be our sole priority agent for our company, and you get all the international referrals and everything. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so call it what it is, you know, but anyways, I think I survived okay. I, I think you did too. Thank you for sharing that, because I think that's a great lesson, and like when I, I find that when someone actually is humble and isn't looking for and just, just doing good things, sometimes they don't say yes to those things right away. So I feel like that's a thank you for sharing that with our. our that's a, you know, that's a good way to put it. I just didn't recognize the opportunity. And, but here I am. <laughs> well, thank you. So, um, you know, what? I, I love this question and um, this is one of my favorites. So what would you like to be remembered for Dane? Like, you know, you're looking back on everything. What would you like everyone to remember you for? Well, I'll tell you, just being um, gracious to my, my brethren, you know, not, not just, you know, fellow people in my brokerage, but any real estate professional. Um, you know, I think we, we discussed a couple things early on, you know, one of the most flattering things is when people from, somewhere else that you met by chance contacts you for your advice or something. And um, there's nothing more flattering than that. Number one, they just trust you as a person. They may have met you for a few hours or for a transaction. But um, so I think to be you know, remembered in the industry, if you wanted to leave some type of fingerprint, it would be that, you know, that it was very neutral, very conciliatory to assist people through their, you know, other professionals, um, real estate professionals, to be successful in their in their own way, in whatever way I could. So, um, you know, just a, a helping hand, I guess. Well, and, you know, I feel like um, in this interview, I'd like to share, because we were talking earlier today um, about, you know, when when your, your story, um, you know, came out on the cover, um, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> the cover itself and uh you know you had phone calls and I feel like you've had such just great karma in your life where I love could you share a little bit of what happened um when this came out because I think that's a, a life well lived and a great career and your dancing shoes are definitely still on you're not you know retiring <laughs> or anything like that but like what kind of things um, happened when your story came out? Like, Well, I think it was a nice testimony to, to your magazine getting out there. And um, so I have uh, you know, many friends and, uh, and many friends over the years um, you know, got into the, to the uh, uh, real estate business. And I certainly perpetuated them. I think I mentored or apprenticed through um, nine of them this year already. That many people were getting into real estate. They were my clients, their families were, were my clients for years, but they all, you know, when people are retiring at my age, my friends, my, they were retiring. And they, so they get your magazine. So you don't know how many people you know, I guess, until something like that comes out. Almost like maybe getting your picture on the news or something or in the post office, you know? So you, you don't know what it's for, but... So I had probably five really good returns. So some people te texted me a, a photograph of the magazine that came in, people that I've worked with and agents or, or real uh, mortgage brokers that I know. So um, one nice phone call with Nathan, who's on the back of your magazine. So Nathan and I go back 30 years. That's awesome. That, that's a whole nother video. It's very funny. But he's, he, I'm, I'm very delighted to call him a friend. I'll see him next week. But he called and gave me a congratulations. Go, and I go, I know you're on the back too, because I saw the magazine. And, stuff. and um, so his call was very encouraging. And a lot of people said, hey, we know you're busy. We didn't know you were that busy. And then, um, you know, the other end of the spectrum is 
somebody that I had no idea called me and they get your magazine. They're, they're, they enjoy it. They're avid readers. They're brand new in the business. And I helped uh, this young lady uh, manage some clients. She was out of the country for, for 10 days. And I just took her clients under control. They were her clients. They're from another brokerage. And I helped them. It was helping myself because they wanted to try to buy my listing. And I did everything I could for it. At no cost, no nothing. It was just to encourage them. And, um, and she took the time to call me and said what a nice gesture that was. And that she was very happy for me and that I deserved to be on the cover just for that. So, so I've had these wonderful calls and, um, and it just shows you the power of your magazine and, and how many people it reaches and how big a life can be. It's, it was very nice. Well, I, I personally, I loved hearing that and the, the great karma you've created out there and um, you were nominated to be on the cover. Not only did you, do you produce enough, but you um, are, are truly a part of the community and you help everyone. So um, honored to have you on the cover. Thank you so much for being with us, Dane. Um, I can't thank you enough and I wish you, wish you great success. Hopefully we'll see you at your events very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.